of the session. Good session for the Australian market, up by 1.1%, and it does follow three consecutive days of gains on the U.S. market. So good to see the Australian market being able to follow through, despite the U.S. futures being down throughout the day. We did see all sectors gaining, with the one exception of consumer staples, and that was, of course, dragged down by Woolworths after its result. Woolworths losing more than 5% today. But altogether, if we have a look at the market, it's really uh, stuck between two areas. The first is 3,765 on the downside of which is the lowest point that we've seen this year and the resistance at 4,270 points and what we really want to see is a break of that 4,270 point mark to see an upward reversal signal so altogether still watching for that mark this week of course earnings very much in focus and we saw quite a few big moves one of the biggest transfer services down a massive 22.3 percent on the back of a disappointing outlook insurance australia group also some uh, concerns about its capital requirement we've seen that drop from 1.92 in the previous year down to just 1.58 so that stock off by three and a half percent but Virgin Blue had a fantastic session up by almost 15 percent after its result toll was up almost nine percent after its result and we saw FKP property up by seven and a half percent so altogether a strong session on the Australian share market all sectors higher with the exception of staples and earnings very much in focus would you think that at the moment would you agree with that the idea that the most is already being priced in in terms of news flow? I think in terms of the market, it is still dependent on the macro picture. And one of the reasons the market's taking a bit of a rest and having a good day, uh, a few cu couple of good days, is that we have seen a lack of news on that, uh, the big picture front. We haven't heard terrible news coming out of the US or Europe, and that's helped the market rally up. Of course, the big event is going to be Jackson Hole, but you get the feeling on the market that it's really just having a bit of a rest. Um, it's still quite a negative, um, I guess, a negative bias when you have a look at the chart. So really looking for a clean break of that 4,270 point level before getting too excited or bullish about the market run that we've had. So the market's still with a bearish bias, but taking a bit of a rest. After all, markets don't move up and down just in a straight line. And it feels like we're taking a bit of a rest until we evaluate what's going to happen in terms of the Jackson Hole speech from Ben Bernanke. But also in terms of some of the other central bankers, ECB, our President Trichet will also be giving a speech on Saturday morning. Julia, what have you made of, as James highlighted, the, the move out of gold and, and, you know, quite substantial moves out of gold and, and continued buying into equities? I think we were talking about gold on Monday where I was saying that gold is looking oversold on the daily charts with a reading of 85. You predicted fact, it, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, if we have a look at the RSI, we saw a double peak in that overbought pattern and that's a very strong reversal pattern. So we have seen a very strong pullback from gold. At the beginning of the week, gold was looking like it was going to test that 2,000 point level and now it's trading below 1,800 US an ounce. So it's amazing how quickly our mm. commodities can reverse and we have seen a very strong reversal and the gold miners, of course, being smashed today on the back of that reversal in gold. We've seen the gold ETF off by around about 5%. But not only that, if you have a look at some of the things happening in terms of the exchanges around the world, we have seen a hike in margin requirements as well. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange raising its margin requirement for gold by 27%. Remember, it was only two weeks ago that it raised it by 22%. And also the Shanghai Gold Exchange um, raising its margin requirement up by 12%. There's also been a bit of chatter around Europe. We've heard for a while now the likes of Finland want some collateral over Greece and now some chatter that perhaps that collateral could be uh, in the form of gold. We know that uh, Greece has about seven billion dollars worth of gold. Portugal uh, more than double uh, that amount. So a, a, a bit of talk that perhaps we could see some central bank uh, selling on the back of those euro woes. But of course Indian wedding season is also coming up in September and that should give some physical support to the gold price.